What is going on, people? It's Emmanuel back with another Power Book 2 Ghost Review. This time, episode 3, titled Play the Game. So we're going to get right into it. So now we really getting into the meat of <clears throat> Monet's business. That whole family situation they got going on. So they got some official, official work that they doing. <clears throat> we start off the episode with with uh, Monet's boys. Kane and his brother, they're making the rounds, collecting their money. Some One of the dudes, I guess he's like a... <clears throat> One of the store owners, you know, he doesn't have his money, and then Kane is about to handle him. So Kane got he got some Tommy in him, cause he's real, he real reckless with it. So he really got some Tommy in him. But we see how serious they business is. They got, is what they got going on. They're not playing. <clears throat> now I got this little new mic situation, so we'll see how that sounds going on <clears throat> so now we have um Tariq is back in his his um his advanced course and he's supposed to read the apology uh Socrates is you no know, defending himself or not defending himself and he has an interesting take on it and he challenges his professor and all that <clears throat> even though Tariq is late again how the hell Tariq late every how, how you late every day or right, come on you got to at least get there on time three, but Tariq kind of puts the teacher on the spot and everything. And later, he later writes a paper on it, and he ends up trying to switch up his style to try to, you know, appease the teacher. And it doesn't work out for him because Jabari, the, the other black teacher, the black dude, um, ends up <clears throat> giving him no credit because... He doesn't, Tariq doesn't say what he said in the class. He ends up trying to agree with uh, Professor Simmons, the um, the white teacher. So Jabari lets him know that um, everything is different for you as a black man. You know, you can't be trying to fit in. You got to share your perspective. You know, you got to be authentic with it. And Jabari doesn't give him another chance to make it up. He lets him know that you got to be authentic with it. Be real with it. So that's another lesson for Tariq. And now we have Tasha hands the birth control, um, the um, morning after pill to the woman in the prison that she wanted to hand it to and all that. But um, <clears throat> Lorenzo has somebody watching her. And then we get to Lorenzo's side. And this dude, Lorenzo, he's he living good in the sun. He got like a, uh, his cell is huge. He got <clears throat> he got one of the CEOs in there, drinking beer, playing cards and everything. He got his cell phone all up in there, chilling. So Lorenzo's he, he's living good in there. So now you really see how um how him and Monet basically just how easy it is for her to wait for him because he's kind of around because she can reach him at any time and they had a little conjugal visit but that <laughs> you know they had like a whole huge bed situation it was like they were at a hotel or something so it has it's like an he's like he's living it up in there even though he's he's locked up and he's basically controlling the business from out there so there's like a struggle between Monet and Lorenzo because uh, Monet is the one that's out there actually doing the work. But Lorenzo is really calling the shots. And they have a situation with um, with one of the groups they're dealing with. This group is out there really all over social media. Bringing attention to everybody. And that could put you know, the um, Lorenzo and Monet's business in jeopardy. Monet wants to cut ties with them, but Lorenzo is like, uh, their father took a bullet from me, so I gotta, you know, I gotta um, stay loyal to them. So they have some tension there. And then uh, Kane and his brother, they go try to handle the situation. Well, the brother goes to handle the situation, and 
he's not as ruthless or as ready for it as Kane. So Kane has to come up. Monet makes sure that Kane goes after him and helps him because the uh, Lorenzo wanted the brother to go instead of Kane. So it's like a lot of tension between all of them. And then Kane shoots up the place and then they, the cops come. They start running and they, they got nowhere to go. They're running, but they lucky as hell that one of the cops is Ramirez, who is um, who uh, Monet has in her pocket. So he makes the other cop, he tells the other cop that they went the other way. And he makes the other cop follow him so they're able to get away. And all that. So that's another piece of tension that's going on between um, the brother, um, Kane, Monet, and between the two brothers and between Lorenzo. And then we have another situation with um, Monet and, and her daughter. The daughter wants to, she's saying, why can't she go to school just like, uh, just like her cousin is able to go to school and play basketball. But Monet is like, that doesn't help the family. She's like, they don't make no damn money in the WNBA. That can't help the family. She's like, what are, what are your brothers going to do if you end up, you know, going away to college? That kind of fuses into the... A lot of people say that uh, the black the black daughters are usually, you know, they usually have to sacrifice a lot. Their lives are sacrificed for you know, the rest of the family. They have to take care of the brothers. They never get to live their lives. So I guess that kind of plays into that whole thing. But so she, Monet, ends up trying to, she calls her dad and tells her dad to convince her mom to her, let her go to school. Uh, Monet figures that out and she's pissed and she figures out that her daughter has a burner phone. She breaks the boner, the burner phone and she tells you lets her know that I'm the one who's here. I'm running shit. You know, this is my house. So you can't run to your dad and try to you know, get him to convince me to do something, you know, because I'm the one who's here. So again, so now you see the tension building between Monet and her daughter. So it's a lot of it's a lot of um, tension building up. So now um, Tasha wants to get on the stand. She she tries to tell her lawyer that uh, Method Man is she that if she's able to get on the stand, she could convince a jury that she's innocent. But he doesn't believe her. So he sets up a mock trial, an official mock trial with the judge, the jury, um, everything. So and then he brings in. But let's go back, and he he gets uh, Tasha all dolled up. She got a fresh new wig on, wig looking nice. She got the makeup going. She got the the power suit going, nice color, you know. So it, it's an official official situation. But they bring in Tamika to be the prosecutor, and. At first, Tasha is doing her thing. She's really convincing the jury. But once Tamika tears into her, she just folds under pressure. And the jury ends up convicting her. Guilty all around. So, <clears throat> that's another knock against Tasha. Tasha got a lot of work to do. She thought she was going to be able to convince the jury. But Tamika just dissected her whole, her whole thing. <clears throat> So we got another, uh, so Tariq, he's, now he's really feeling the pressure of helping um, Zeke with his, with his work. And now Zeke is telling the press that he's going to play the next game, but um, that's really, is probably won't be happening. So Tariq is under a lot of pressure. And now his own work is suffering. But really, like, Tariq failed. He failed that other test. It wasn't Zeke's fault he failed. He just wrote the wrong shit. But he was making it seem like, you know, he failed because he was doing Zeke's work. But, um, nah, you failed because you tried to write what you thought Professor Simmons wanted. Well, you took um, the other girl's advice, which was like, kind of, it was wrong. You should have just wrote what you felt. So, um, so he tells Zeke, like, he walks in and he sees Zeke just doing, uh, he's playing video games. 
So Zeke is really like disarrangement. He ain't doing no work. Tariq is literally doing all his motherfucking work. So Tariq is like, you got to do some work because if I fail, I can't help you because I'm going to be out of Stansfield. So you got to do some work too. But then Tariq is like, you need to do me this favor. Even though, because he asked Zeke earlier in the episode again, to um, he's trying to get a sit down with, Mo, with Monet. Zeke is like, nah, she wants to keep family and school separate. And Tariq knows that that means she wants to keep Tariq at arm's length. But he, she, she knows Tariq is important for Zeke also. So, when Tariq let Zeke know that, that um, I need to stay in Stanford. If I fail out, then you still going to be on proba probation and you can't play. So, you need to do me a favor now. And you can't say no. So, now he gets the meeting with Monet. Zeke sets it up and Monet shows up to the dorm. She's like, uh, I thought you said that uh, Tariq... Already left. He was like, Mom, he was like, Auntie, you know, I need Tariq. So, can you do me this favor? Boom. So, she's like, Five minutes. Go wait for me in the car. So, Tariq, her and Tariq are alone. First time. And Tariq shows her this bag, opens it. It's a bunch of money in there. She's like, I don't need this. I have enough. And he tells her, I made this in just a few short hours without even leaving campus. So, <clears throat> he tells her he and he asks her, you know, how long does it take you to make this money? He lets her know that all the people, the only thing that people do here is study and party, so they going they get lit. So he lets her know that the opportunity to make money is endless over here, and you don't have to deal with those other dudes who's gonna put your business out, you know, because they up on live and they're like flashy. They might mention you. They almost put her son on on live. That would have been a whole bad situation. So Tariq convinces her, convinces her and she lets him know, yeah, I'll work with you, but you can't live with Zeke. You can't live with the um with with her nephew. You gotta move out. Because she wants to keep him completely separated from that. She's focused on him making it to the NBA, cause him making it to the NBA, that'll just completely change everything for the family. That's millions of easy legal dollars, right there. So she's like, you gotta keep Zeke completely separate from this. So boom, Tariq moves out and he moves in with his white homie. Now him and his white homie, they working together. But now he goes from the regular dorm, and now his homie, I think he got like a fireplace. Like he's in an official dorm because he, you know, he's he's a legacy kid. He's a rich kid. He got an official dorm. He got a little secret compartment that got liquor in it. So they they're really about to get lit. So now the business is really gonna start up at this point. The next episode, Tariq got his supplier, so he got the product. You know, he got his partner. They got their own situation, their own house. They got endless amount of clients and all that so it's it's about to get about to be on and popping but then it's it'll be interesting to see how um how Monet's daughter fits in with everything seeing how much tension that's building between her and her mom so like uh, um so now end of the uh now let's go back a little bit um, so, um, Tasha's lawyer met the man. He tries to get Tamika to join his team to defend Tasha. to build a little black dream team. And Tamika tells him no. So, uh, he, and he, he figures out that, um, him and his partner figure out that, uh, Sax brought her in to defend Tasha originally. So now he knows that this whole try, this whole situation is really about sex. So there's something sex is is involved in it in some way. So he has to figure that out. So he's like, we have to double down in this now because there's something, something they write in the water here. All right. So now we get to 
the last couple scenes, now that Monet is working with Tariq, she tells Lorenzo, and Lorenzo's like, how do you know we can trust her? And she's like, you know, we can't, we don't know, but, you know, we're going to keep a close eye on him. And then, so, Lorenzo calls Tasha, and he lets Tasha know that your son is working for us now. You better keep him in line, or he's a dead man. So, Tasha's going to keep Tariq in line. So, that's how it's, now Tasha knows that Tariq is back in the business and all that. Now, he's doing it at Stansfield. He's associated with um, Zeke. Like, the entire story is coming together because now everyone really knows who everyone is. So now, I guess now we're really getting into the show. After this episode, the show really begins. And we've been introduced to everybody, basically. Now everyone knows their role. Everyone is acquainted with each other. You know, we, everyone is working with each other now. Tasha knows everybody. Tasha knows exactly what Tariq is doing. Well, close to what Tariq is doing, what he's involved in. So, it's about to be on. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. This 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 was a was a good episode. We, did we really getting into the story now? So you know, I'm looking forward to next week. Anyway, let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Yeah, you know, uh, comments. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your fellow ghost fans, and all that. And I'll catch y'all next week. All right. Peace.